This is Dr. Holt. This is one of the web assigned problems I want to go over. Here we have a wheel free to rotate about its axis that is not frictionless, and that's important, is initially at rest. A constant external torque of 53 Newton meters is applied to the wheel for 18 seconds, giving the wheel an angular velocity of 600 revolutions per minute. The external torque is then removed, and the wheel comes to rest 120 seconds later. We want to find the moment inertia of the wheel and find the frictional force, excuse me, the frictional torque, which is assumed to be constant. All right, again, key information here is at is rest. By that, we can say that the angular velocity, omega, is equal to zero radians per second. We do know that. Okay, now what I would do would be find out what this angular velocity is going to be and that is occurred at 18 seconds so we know that omega at 18 seconds again I'm not multiplying but omega at 18 is equal to 600 revolutions per minute we'll do that unit conversion multiply that by 1 rev 2 pi radians we got minutes in the denominator we we'll put minutes up here and we have 60 seconds. Run that number and you'll get omega at 18 is equal to 62.83 radians per second. Okay. Now you know here that the wheel comes to rest now, if the wheel is coming to rest and you have this much angular velocity at 62.83, there must be some type of torque. Let me shut this off. Must be some type of a torque that's being applied to this. So we could say, if I draw it, we could say, let's see, we'll be consistent too. We're going this way at 62.83. So there must be some torque being applied that's pushing back this way here. And again, the reason you know that torque has been applied is because if torque wasn't applied, this would continue to spin at 62.83 radians per second. Because it says here that uh, external torque is applied for the wheel for 18 seconds. So then it's let off. So if it was let off, you would again, you would continue to rotate at 62.83. But again, it says here that you're coming to stop 128 seconds later. So we can use our kinematic equation. And we can say omega is equal to zero. And that would be omega at 125. Excuse me, at 120 is equal to zero. So we can say omega is equal to 60. 2.83 minus our angular acceleration times our time and that's 120 seconds. Okay, solving for angular acceleration, angular acceleration equal value of negative 0.524 radians per second squared all right. Now we also know that torque is equal to angular acceleration times I. So we can say that the torque that's being applied by the friction is equal to this value because this is just the frictional acceleration. That's what's causing the, the uh, wheel to stop. We put that as minus 5.524 times I. All right. We also know that the summation of all torques must equal to I times angular acceleration. Now we're going to apply this angular acceleration for the first 18 because we because we have the frictional torque is always being applied, but we also apply in a 53 newton. So we can say that minus 
two four times I, which again the frictional torque plus the fifty three that's being applied must equal to I times the angular acceleration that's being applied for the first eighteen seconds. All right, now there's enough information we can find this value right here. If we go back to the problem, we know we started from rest and we know we reached 62.83 radians per second in 18 seconds. We go back to the kinematics, the final angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times t. So we put in this value right here as 62.83. It started from rest. We put 0 plus our angular acceleration times our 18 seconds. Solve for this and we will get that value to be approximately 3.49 radians per second squared. All right, so now all we have to do is take that value that we have right here, put it back in to this equation right here, and when we do that gives us minus 0.524 times I plus 53 is equal to 3.49 times I. That gives us 53 is equal to 3.49 plus 0.524 times I. Solve for I. I would equal to about 13.20 kilograms times meter squared. Okay, and that's how you get the moment inertia. Now to get the torque all you have to do is take that at value we have right here, put it right back into the equation here. So really all we do is multiply that by negative 0.524. So we take negative 0.524, multiply it by 13.20, and that will give you the value that the correct answer here of negative 0.69, negative 6.91, which is what I got when I ran this problem. and that would be Newton meters. Okay, So that's how you solve this problem. Again, probably the most, maybe the thing that maybe is the confusing is maybe the first part here, realizing that there is some type of frictional torque that's been applied because the object is stopping. Go ahead and, and use that, the, the kinematic equations and solve for what that angular acceleration is going to be that's causing this object to stop, which you can find. Then go back to the summation of torque, excuse me, go back to torque is equal to angular acceleration times I. Put this back in, get your um, frictional torque in terms of I, and then put it back in the summation of torque is equal to I times angular acceleration, and then the, part, the problem pretty much falls apart. All right, best of luck.